grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the kids to come on up. How's things going? Things going good? Yeah. Um, since you both have glasses, you go to the eye doctor, right? And you go to the eye doctor and they take off your glasses and they, they use that, that fancy thing that has all different lenses in it, right? You ever been there? And they go, um, now which one can you see better with, A or B? Everybody know that? Remember that from the eye doctor, A or B? And of course you look and go, I don't know. <laughs> Flip it back again, right? And you have to see it again. And then you say A or B. And then, okay, well, now B or C. And they keep going right there until you see perfectly. And it's, and, you know, and, and the whole idea is that you can see things better. And because when you have glasses, you can see, I mean, me without my glasses, everybody here is blurry. But with my glasses, I can see them better. And when you go to the dye doctor, they, they make sure it's right. Well, you know, and they help us see. Today in our story, in our gospel reading, you'll hear, uh, the, the followers of John the Baptist are pointed to Jesus. They go, hey, John the Baptist goes, hey, look, there's the, there's the one who's coming into the world to save us. 
And so they all go over and they follow him. And And they ask Jesus questions. And Jesus says, come and see. And so they... They follow him and all that. So Jesus invites them to go see things clear, better, to understand more. And you know what? As we go around, as disciples, as those that have been baptized, we are ones that can go and help other people see. Sort of think of yourselves as your glasses. And you help people see Jesus. But you know how we do that? We do that by the way we live, by being the one that helps care for others, and they can see through us a glimpse of Jesus. We help, we love other people. We reach out and help those that are maybe less fortunate. We have compassion for those people that are sick or or, or having troubles. And people can see that, and through us, we can be the lenses by which people which people can see Jesus better, to know who Jesus is because of the how we live. So let's pray. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for your son, Jesus, who, who points us and shows us what it is to serve and love you. Help us be the way for others to see and learn about Jesus through, through the love that we share in this world. Lord, we ask you to be with us this day and with our families and all God's people say, amen. Thanks for coming up. Let's turn now to God's holy word. The first reading is from Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands, pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born, while I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword, in the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow, in his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the redeemer of Israel and his holy one, to one deeply despised, Abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ, Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been, has been given in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translates meaning teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you on this day in the name of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Before I forget, um, I forgot in the announcements to mention that uh, this following week I will be on vacation for this week coming up. Uh, I will be away. If there is a pastoral emergency, please call Bonnie uh, at the office and let her know, and she will contact our uh, standby uh, pastors that I have con connected to be on call in case there's any problems, which will be uh, Pastors Tony and Pastor um, Tr Tricia Schneck. Uh, they are both on backup in case there is a pastoral emergency to visit anybody in the hospital or whatever. 
So they are available, but please call Bonnie and she will contact them. And then next week, um, our Pastor Emeritus, Pastor Strobel, will be covering for me while I'm, uh, I'm gone. Well, we are here in the season of Epiphany, the season of light. We got our, our Epiphany star hanging there. And I was reminded the other day, I had to come up here into the sanctuary for something. And, you know, when all the lights are off in the sanctuary, but it's sunny outside, the sun really shines in on our stained glass windows. And, you know, they're really beautiful. We don't really think about them there all the time. Um, this one up here, it shines really bright because the sun is coming in over here on the sides. Those in the back are a little bit less uh, sunny. I think the building itself shades it a little. But these lights, you know, these windows are beautiful. And I mean, we have one that even has a dinosaur in it over here by the uh, piano. But um, the light shines in and it illuminates the figures and the stories that are painted on these windows. And I hope, hope over the years you've taken time to, to look at what is represented in these pictures see, that shine brightly inside this place. But what do these windows look like from the outside? They're kind of blah, right? I mean, if we turn off the lights in here, the light will continue to shine through the windows and and we can see their splendor, but outside they're kind of gray and boring. To get an idea of that, when you leave, look at the couple stained glass windows that are out in the chapel. They're just, you know, that are uh, boarded over with the wall. They're just gray and blah. If you're walking by this church, you have no idea that inside is all this light and color, right? In order to see, you need to come inside to see the light. You know, last week we heard from Matthew's account of Jesus' baptism, and we recalled our own baptism that's sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. We have, by grace alone, been forgiven and made right with God and claimed as children of God for all time. Today, though, we turn to John's Gospel. Now, if you remember, the prologue of John's Gospel, the very first verses, begins with the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. John testifies, gives witness, points to the light, identifies Jesus. Here he is, twice in our reading today, he's pointing, declares this is the one, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. His basic message is, it's not about me. It's about him, the one who is the son of God. He was willing to become less to point out the one that's greater. Because of his witness, others seek out what Jesus offers. These were the followers of John who now turned to Jesus. And one of them was named Andrew. John's purpose as a witness was not to keep his, everyone's eyes and attention on him, but to point to Jesus, to point to the one who, that gives forgiveness. When these guys approach Jesus, they first get a question. What are you looking for? And as I read this, I'm not sure they really knew what they were looking for. Just that John pointed them to him. So they go to him. I'm not sure Andrew and the other person could actually articulate what they were looking for at that moment. But following John's pointing finger, they ended up 
face to face with Christ. How many of us could actually articulate exactly why we are drawn in faith to seek out Jesus? Think about that. How can we, can you articulate why you are drawn in faith to seek out Jesus? They asked Jesus, where are you staying? In other words, they want to know, where can we find you? Where can we find you? Folks give all kinds of reasons why they go to or seek out a certain congregation, right? What they're looking for in their church home. Maybe it's the music, the youth programs, the building, beautiful windows, welcoming people. These are all reasons. They're all important reasons of what of and elements of what makes up a faith community. But the core question is, can Christ Jesus be found there in the community? Jesus responds to them simply, come and see. And they did. And in response, Andrew runs and gets his brother Simon Peter and brings him along to see Jesus as well. Andrew himself is an interesting person in Scripture. He's almost always in the shadows, and we don't know much about him. He's, you know, he's in the shadow of his more outspoken brother, Peter. Right? Peter's always out there in the forefront, but Andrew's sort of in the background. But three times in John's Gospel, Andrew is the one bringing someone to Jesus. First his brother, Simon Peter, and then a boy. Remember the story? A boy with five barley loaves and two fish. Here's a, someone that has some food. And then finally, at another point, he brings Jesus some Greeks in chapter 12 of John's Gospel that are interested in learning about Jesus. One does not need to be flamboyant or some kind of a, a leader to bring folks to Jesus. Andrew was a behind the scenes kind of guy yet was an effective disciple and witness to Jesus. There is need in this world today for ordinary folks like Andrew to be committed witnesses to the light of Christ. We live in this midst of this broken and fallen world in a culture of, of unrest, of uncertainty, and discontent. And face it, there's a lot of grumpy people out there. We have the shooting of two police officers in Brackenridge, one, the chief, who died. And that hit home to my daughter, who lives in Tarentum, who knew both of them. They used to come in, she used to work at a marathon convenience store in Tarentum, right on the edge of Brackenridge, and both of them would come into there for coffee. And the Tarentum, and also um, they would direct traffic at my, my, um, my grandson's school as the kids were getting on the bus. So the people knew them. And, and then there's that story of the six-year-old student down in Virginia who, who shot and wounded his first grade teacher. And I saw on the news, middle of the week last week, a Butler County man had put up these electric signs along the side of the road with messages of hate and division and racism right on the roadside where everybody can see it and called it his right because of freedom of speech. In Christ, there is a word of peace and reconciliation and unity that can speak loudly in the midst of violence and growing division in cultures that celebrate self. Discipleship testifies to the faithfulness of God for the sake of all 
It's not about us. It's not about me. It's about what God is up to. There is need in, in local communities for committed witness that Christ has indeed broken into the world with a word of love and justice and hope. In the midst of people that are searching in these uncertain times. As present day followers of Christ, we can follow in the footsteps of Andrew. No, not may, we do, we must, as disciples, follow in the footsteps of Andrew. Here in this place, we are called to share the light of Christ with the world. We can be witnesses that say, come and see to those around us that have not yet discovered what they're looking for. Discipleship does not mean to keep the light of Christ hidden, closed away behind dark walls just for ourselves. The life of discipleship points to what God has done and is active doing out among God's people. As we go about being church together, we can recall our text of image of being witnesses that point to the one who has come to redeem, to forgive, to bring wholeness and healing, inviting, come and see. And we can also then ask that question, if they come, what will they see? Will our ministry to and for this community and the world truly testify to the one in whose name we gather and pray? Will our words and actions point to Christ Jesus, not ourselves? Will those who come to see find themselves face to face with Christ in the midst of the people gathered? Claimed and gathered as the people of God, we share the light of Christ as we live out our baptismal promises to let our light shine before others, not to keep it to ourselves, to give glory, not to ourselves, but to give glory to God. May these windows, so brilliant on the inside and opaque outside, be a reminder to us to Come and see the light of Christ. As Paul writes to the church in Corinth, those who have been called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All God's people say, Amen.
us profess the faith we hold in common using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries especially our synodical mission partner, the Malagasy Lutheran Church in Madagascar. Faithful, merciful God, receive our prayer. The waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters. Protect them from pollution. Support plants and animals who depend on them. And bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods in California. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. <clears throat> Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges with discernment and compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the people of Ukraine. Help heal the wounded. Receive the dying into your embrace. And comfort those who mourn. Strengthen rescue and relief workers who protect and provide for others in the midst of crisis and chaos. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. We pray especially for the Barrett family, Mindy, Penny, Matt, Walt, Becky, Bill, Janet, Joan, Jerry, Mark, Gloria, Jeff, Grace, victims of hurricanes, our shut-ins, and those we now name before you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in you. Even when it feels like a sharp sword or a polished arrow, give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In every place and time you have sanctified your people. We praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and our hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power that is revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
share this gift of peace. Peace, Pastor. Justice and, and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. We magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his preaching, his healing, his dying and rising and his promise to come again we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Come and taste the joy of God. Amen. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in grace. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, strengthen and uphold you today and always. 